Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Australia, the Gospel Straight Rye Whiskey. Whiskey base number 167736. Um, and over here in Germany, we're going to pay about 45 euros for this. If you don't know where Melbourne, Australia is, they put a little um, necklace on the bottle here, down there, the gospel. Now, if you go to their website, I must admit the website looks a little bit like the guys are on um, drugs. Um, Thegospelwhiskey.com has one word. And you actually have here a lot of different words and like, it looks like a cult type moment. And they actually say whiskey is religion and rye is the gospel. Hmm. So um, I'm just going to read the, 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 the start here of their website. It says it is widely believed that whiskey was first distilled from um, medicinal um, use by monks and also in Scotland and Ireland. The distillation of whiskey evolved as it moved from um, monastic to um, sacral, se secular, sorry, um, as it did with the path of migration over hundreds of years. Early Scotch-Irish settlers in the U.S. used rye to make whiskey because barley didn't adapt to the North America climate. These conditions are also true for the dry climate of Australia, where we set out to reimagine this original American spirit using 100% Australian rye. So, 100% Australian rye, that is very good. I actually know the name of the farm here where they get their rye from. And if I can find this correctly and quickly, it is... Wow, I can't. It is the Murray Mali farm there in the south of Australia. So 45% ABV, 45 euros basically over here. Interesting enough, if you go to the website, um, the price in... Um, so I'm terrible with prices, yeah? So the straight rye whiskey is 91 can, um, Australian dollars. I have no idea what that is in American or in Euro. And it's the Solero rye. It's 80. I haven't found the Solero yet. I have to go out and buy that. Another thing that I found interesting was on the bottle, it says here on the label, imported by VOC uh, Distribution BV, the Netherlands. And then there's a nice little stamp on top of this or a label. Um, it says, import Pass Spiritosen Großhandel, Stefan Paul in Berlin. So it's actually a, a spirits wholesaler in Berlin that actually has the rights for Germany. And apparently someone else um, does it in the Netherlands. What we do in the moment is we import spirits into the UK. Many, 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 many people, especially the somewhat smaller ones, have for some reason in Amsterdam, in Netherlands, how they have like their port of entry where they do all the paperwork. And then from there, they send it all over Europe. And then you have your individual distributors in the countries. With my business that I'm working together with my friends from the UK, um, um, we are trying to do the a uh, little bit different that we're trying to bring the goods from the United States, rye bourbon, into Germany. And from Germany, we're going to try to do distribution all over Europe. Why? Because I live in Germany. I don't live in the Netherlands. Um, but to be very, very honest, to drive to Amsterdam is for me quicker than to drive up to Hamburg where the port is just from location. But due to tax laws and other laws and setting up a business and so on, it's going to be um, more practical to do that um, in Germany and then send the pallets all over the um, European Union. At least that's the plan. So we're back in Australia here. We have a interesting rye. Now, I must admit that there's something I just love about this website. It's not the design. It's a thing called the journal. From the journal. And um, one thing they talked about, for example, in the journal is what is straight rye whiskey. Now, to be very, very honest, straight rye whiskey has no definition, no legal definition in Australia. What they're doing is they're using the American definition of straight rye whiskey and doing exactly the same in Australia. All right, so um, it is a legal definition in America. It's binding in America, but it's not binding in, the, in Australia. And there's one little point that I'm going to mention here as well that they kind of, I think, maybe I misunderstood it, they bend the rules a little bit. All right, 
So um, what they have here is to understand what straight rye whiskey is, um, we first need to define American rye whiskey. And according to the Alcohol and Tobacco Trade Bureau of the U.S., it is whiskey produced at not exceeding 80% alcohol by volume, 160 proof, from a fermented mash of not less than 51% rye and stored at not more than 62.5% alcohol by volume, 125 proof in charred new oak containers. Yay! So we need 51%. This is 100% rye. They use enzymes to make that. All right. So now straight rye is a subcategory under the broad definition of requiring rye whiskey to also be used, uh, aged in new charred oak for at least two years. It cannot contain any additives in terms of flavor or caramel coloring. And after maturation, you're only legally allowed to blend a, a barrel of straight rye whiskey with other barrels of straight rye whiskey, um, particularly and um, chill filtration, um, bring it to now proof using water. These post maturation ste steps are optional. Whiskey is produced from a fermentation mash of no less than 51% of any one type of grain and stored for a period of two years or more in charred new oak containers may optionally be designated merely as straight whiskey. No other whiskeys may be designated straight. So what we have here is we have what a President William Howard Taft did in 1909. So the Taft decision built on the 1906 Pure Food and Drug Act and the Bottle and Bond Act of 1897. And it was an effort back then to um, protect consumers from these adulterated whiskeys. Uh, only one modification was added to the law in 1938. Since then, it actually says that um, for whiskey it has to be aged in new charred barrels. Hmm, I did not know the word barrel. All right. Very, very good. So um, now what we have here is a whiskey that has been aged for a minimum of two years in, I love it, Brunswick, Australia. So Brunswick is a town in Germany, in German Braunschweig, in English Brunswicker. So we have that nice little pastry um, that we, not pastry, it's a, um, it's a Leberwurst. I don't know what the English word is, Brunswicker. Um, so they actually, by Bel Mel Melbourne, they have to age this for at least three years to bring it into the European Union. Whiskey has to be three years old here. Bourbon can be something else. It's legally, um, legally protected, but not a rye whiskey. So um, what am I going to compare it to? Originally, I wanted to compare it to this. 100% unmalted barley from Canada. So I love this bottle. This is my favorite rye whiskey maybe of the entire world, <laughs> at least at a um, price that I'm willing to pay for it. Sorry, um, would you, where would you, Pappy Reserve. Um, that was what, was the 13-year-old rye that was fantastic, cost like 4,000 euros at the moment, such a 13-year-old rye bottle from, um, from Pappy. Um, oh well, this is 35 euros, this is 45 euros. This is 43%, this is 45%. This is Canada, far away. This is Australia, farther away. All right, this is made in a big, 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 in Windsor, um, industrial complex uh, where they don't think about tons of barley. They think about elk, um, um, truckloads of barley. Here, um, very small. They did everything themselves. If you go back to the journal, they actually have here a beautiful, beautiful um, blog entry called, um, what was it called here? I'm sorry, I need to go back here uh browse the archives it's actually called um why rye our journey to rye it's beautiful it's i thank you very much for writing this all right um we had the first dots and they talked about the how they produced their first distillery from hand think balconas back then when tate actually hammered out the pot still they used milk producing equipment, stainless steel things for milk, and they uh, actually have a louter ton, um, a louter plate. They took a, a plate of metal and drilled holes in it so they could actually be used like a um, to filter out then the um, the grate, the grist um, from the liquid. Uh, as amazing, they talk about all the mistakes they made here trying to filter out the the rye whiskey. Um, they had a little sh um, a cloth and they would, ugh, it was, it was terrible. They, they were so frustrated. They wanted to use it, but it just didn't work here. And 
rye, you cannot make rye the way you make bourbon. You cannot make rye the way you make single malt. Rye is a totally different beast, and you need to understand that. And people that have specialized in making rye have learned the hard way <laughs> that that is a totally different thing to use. After you get the hang of it, it's like, hey, we can do this. But until you figure out it's different, it can be, um, it can be very, very, very frustrating. So the guys actually went over the states. Um, where was it here? Search and discovery. It says here in the mid 2016, um, they actually went over the states. They visited seven different, seven D different bars, which I think is really, really interesting. And um, they ask every single time the same question here. Um, what's the next big thing? Everything was bourbon, and is the next big thing is going to be mezcal or it's going to be rye? And so they finally actually figured out how to do this, and they've been working on it ever since. And we now actually have the product over here in Europe. Wow! I have, I would love to know how um, the contact from Australia made its way over to Europe and made its way over to Berlin and made its way now to my desk here where I'm tasting this. All right, so enough of my blah blah on the nose. Oh, it's a young green dill rye whiskey. Oh, now there are basically two camps for me with rye whiskey. We have the camp I'm going to put up here as well our 95.5, um, the bullet type of stuff from MGP, which is more of a, um, an, a eucalyptus. You have a little bit of a menthol, menthol moment. You have a little bit of a mint moment. And I love that. That's my brand of rye whiskey, which I love. Not much dill, a lot of that eucalyptus, a lot of the menthol, a lot of that um, peppermint mint moment here. And that's what I get on my rye from um, Lot 40. That's what I get on my... $24, $35, $45 on my bullet rye from MGP. Over here, I get a, I get a, a birch sap note. You take a birch twig, you pull off the bark, and you have that birch sap. It's very dill. It's very green. It's very vegetal. It's like a bell pepper, a green bell pepper. Not really, really my thing. Some people love this rye moment. I unfortunately don't. All right. I love the story. I love the people behind this. Um, and I love what they're doing. And yet, I must admit, um, this is not the favorite product in the world for me. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Um, just recently I did here the Ranger Creek Rye 44 caliber, also very, very green. Also 100% rye, if I remember correctly. And what they used here, they used reused, um, bourbon casks here. They use fresh American charred oak casks, but it's very, very grain forward. It's very, very, um, rye green and not a... Um, as in green sap and not as a beautiful, beautiful type of eucalyptus type of minty moment that I have over here. The alcohol, 45%, very well integrated, very nicely done, just not my flav flavor profile. The lot 40. Hmm. 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 In comparison, yummy. <laughs> I just love this. Um... Some people like it, some people don't. Some people like this much better. That's what they're going for, well done. Um, I'm gonna give this a C- minus for taste. I'm gonna give it a, a D plus for value for money. And I'm going to say that I want to try the Solera. Now, ryes are experiencing a renaissance. We're doing a lot with rye. Minor case puts it in cherry. Um, other people have been doing also finishings with rye. You can actually try to blend different types of rye. We have the 95.5 and we have the barely legal rye, 51% that Sagamore's doing and other people are doing. Whistle pigs blending Canadian rye and putting it in uh, Vermont rye oak, um, rye um, Vermont um, oak casks and doing special things with that. I think rye has a very, very bright future. I think the guys here at the Gospel um, are doing absolutely the right thing in the right direction. 
as a church-going Christian. I'm not really sure if I love the name, the gospel, um, but hey, Roy from Aqua Vita calls himself an evangelist. And so I would, I also evangelize about um, whiskey. And so if whiskey's our religion, then rye is the gospel. Mm. All right, I can live with that, but I would have preferred a different name, but that's just my Christian upbringing that comes through in that moment. So my question of the day is, what is your favorite rye whiskey not made in the United States? Canada has some great ryes. Australia has some ryes. In Germany, we have Stork. Um, our Beaky we have up in Scotland. Um, I'm sure France, they have some ryes. We have a lot of ryes up and coming from very, very different places. India had a rye, I think it was Amrut rye. Um, what is your favorite non-US rye? <laughs> Can you think of something? Put it down in there. My definitely is about 40. I love it, I enjoy it, and I thank you, Mr. Don, uh, Dr. Don Livermore, every single time that you made this product such um, an available product all over the world at a very affordable price and delicious, in my opinion. All right, thank you very much. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American tasting rare and exotic, rye from Australia, mm -hmm, rare and exotic. Thank you very much. If you ever need to contact me, whiskeyjason at gmail.com. Whiskey Jason, one word. Bye-bye.